Hello friends, uh, in this course we will be looking at front-end web development. So uh, we will be focusing on HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now before getting into that, so let's understand what a simple web application is and then we'll talk about anything that involves or revolves around uh, developing web applications can be discussed and then we will slowly get into the course, right? So let's look at some real-time examples. Let's look at Google, right? So as you all know, this is a simple web browser. And uh, you go to the browser and you type in google.com. It pops up a search bar. And the search bar will have two simple components. You know, it'll have the logo or the company in which you're going to search or the brand name of the company, which is Google. And then there will be a small search bar which you can use to search whatever you want. For example, let's say I like ice creams and it gives you results. Oh, do you like ice creams, right? So, so this is a simple application, which is a simple search based, web based search application. You can search whatever you want uh, uh, and it helps you to get the results of your choice. Now, this, is, this would be a simple web application now consider if you're planning to develop a web application like this, then we would typically call that as a web application development. Now why it is called as front-end web development? Because this involves uh, elements that constitute you know, the things that are more on the aesthetic side of uh, what you see and what is displayed in the browser and that's why it's called as front-end web development right with that said let's go back to the course and uh, let's get started right so as i said there are three components to it any web application will have uh, variations or components of html css and javascript however as as part of this course uh, we'll be focusing on the html alone and uh, the topics that we would be covering in this HTML course will start from a little introduction about HTML. What is it and what, what does it stand for? Uh, why is it important? Uh, and uh, what else we can do with that? Can we do some real-time applications like Google, which I just showed you? And uh, flip cards, as most of you guys know, what a flip card is. Can we build a sophisticated application like this or a sophisticated uh, e-commerce portal like this or can we build an application like McDonald's where uh, most of us know what McDonald's burgers are so again you can place your order here and still uh, the, 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 the burger comes to your home still uh, there are various use cases use cases or, or applications as I would call it uh, we will be seeing all those in the next couple of uh, uh, minutes right so without further uh, detail let's get into it so now what is HTML so that is one question that should always come to your mind right so before getting into anything for that matter one is hypertext markup language it's it's basically an acronym of hypertext markup language now what is it a programming language uh, some call it programming and re some really Call it as a markup language so what is it really you know what is it markup so if it is not a programming language then what is a markup language I'll give you a simple analogy right uh, let's say you are an artist and you're thinking of painting something in a canvas you have a paintbrush and you also have a small bottle of paint and then you have a canvas now you decide to paint and you decide to paint a small house right so you quickly take a couple of colors from the palette and then you go and make strokes on the canvas and then you kind of come up with a house now the task that you did to create a house in the canvas is the exact role of how HTML is going to help you as a web application developer to create the aesthetic element of a web application for example now let's look at flipkart so flipkart is brilliant it has a search bar right it has a logo here it has a login and sign up page here and if you scroll down here you will see notification preferences sell on flipkart 24 cross 7 all these things come up you know so so the role of a html is all about that is to tell you 
what you can see and what you can infer from this particular browser and the browser helps you to translate all the codes into a readable format or a consumable or a, or, a, or, a, or a format which is most understandable by the consumer. Now let's look at this. Google is a simple uh, search bar. It looks very simple. Now let's see the code that is behind this page. You'll see pages and pages of codes being written for this. Now without complicating it, all I wanted to show right now is a simple HTML uh, output page or a, or a thing that you will see in a browser might look might be aesthetically good but at the back of it there are a lot of code elements which are being translated by the browser and in this case the browser is nothing but the google chrome and of course html contains a lot of tags we'll spend a lot more time on what those tags are uh, and and basically an html tag tells the browser what it is and how is it the browser needs to show the art to the end user and again, the browser renders the tags and converted in, converts them into the formatted uh, format, which is which is the user uh, is interested in seeing, right? So the role of a browser is to convert the real markup code into a meaningful format, which is Google.com. Uh, you can go and search it as quickly as possible. Now, with that said, let's look at a small HTML example. In a typical HTML code, there are usually four major blocks. One is the doc type, which, which tells the browser what version of HTML that the browser can expect. The second one is the HTML root. It has an open HTML tag and also it has a closed HTML tag. And the third element is the header tag which tells typically like the title of the page, the meta scripts, the links and anything that might be associated with that particular page usually comes at the header of the page. And the fourth and the important one is the body of the tag. Now the body of the tag usually contains all the text, images, tables, forms, whatever you see in a typical website. In the case of Flipkart, right so you see so many images you see so many images you see this you know the the layout like electronics tv men and all these things you know comes under comes under you know the the body of the email right? body of the html tag so the four major elements you know just keep in mind for now number one is the doc type which tells the browser what the version of html they can expect number two uh, the root element which which tells you where the HTML starts and where the HTML ends and the header element which typically contains the meta scripts we'll talk about that in detail in the next couple of minutes but for now just keep these four things in mind 